So what's your angle? What I mean is what angle is your ax ground at? Well, today we're gonna to talk about how to make a simple jig right here out of just a piece of wood you have laying around with just a few simple tools. We're in my shop, we're not outside today. It's a little bit rainy, so I thought, well, this is a good project. And this is something you wanna take a little bit of care with because once it's done, you can put it in your kit, have it with you, and you're always gonna be sharp as can be. So this is a newly acquired ax I just got. It's a trapper's ax from Russia. And uh, it's brand new in a sense that it's vintage, but it was never filed, it was never ground. It has the initial grind on it, but it was never finalized. So I did some research, I sent some emails, and I finally found out that this ax should be a 23 degree grind on this. So unless you have some kind of special fixture or grinding tools that you can set at specific angles, how are we gonna get that? Well, first of all, you can go ahead and just hand sharpen this thing and you'd probably get it to where you need it and it would work just fine. But what if you wanted exactly what the manufacturer says? Well, today we're gonna to talk about how to make a simple jig to fit over this. So we're gonna do that, 23 degrees, let's get started. So after a few emails and a long extensive search online, what I found out is that this ax from the manufacturer requires a 23 degree bevel, 1.5 centimeters back. Okay, so that's what we're gonna aim for, for for this project itself. So here's what we wanna do. First thing we wanna do is I have my piece of wood, it's squared up, I squared it up first. So I'm gonna measure back 1.5 centimeters on each side and draw a reference line across that. So line up our two, draw a reference line. Now I have a reference line going across at 1.5 centimeters. Next thing, I'm gonna take my protractor here and we know that we need a 23 degree bevel. So half a 23 is 11 and a half. So I'm gonna take this gauge and I'm going to set this to 11 and a half tighten it down and then what I'm going to do is draw my first line so make sure that's all squared up and I'm just drawing a line okay so we had the first part of our line now I'm going to take this bevel this gauge I'm sorry and I'm going to set this the other direction, 11 and a half degrees. Tighten that down. Now what I'm looking for this time is where my first line intersects my 1.5 centimeter reference line. That's where I want these two lines to intersect. Get it right in there draw it out. Now what we have is this section here that I'm coloring in that's a 23 degree bevel so we can take this over we're gonna cut this out and show you the next step. So I'm gonna put my wood into my vise, tighten it down and then we're gonna use a dovetail saw. This just gets very fine cuts. Just be careful when you're cutting this that you get a little bit inside the line because you want the thickness of the saw to remove that line.
Okay, so now I have a very simple jig made that I can place my ax in and look where am I at with this. Now, I'm gonna tell you one thing. When you first make one of these jigs for the first time, you might put your ax and think, oh, I'm close, I'm good. But in all reality, this should be as close to 23 degrees if you cut it correctly as you're gonna get by hand. So you're gonna really wanna take your time and really custom fit our edge to fit in there that it fits like a glove. That thing should fit in there absolutely perfect. Now with larger items like splitting malls and splitting axes, you might wanna go up to 25 degrees. I know Gransford Brux axes are around 18 degrees. I measured mine, 19 degrees maybe. So depending on the type of ax you have depends on the type of angle, of course, that's gonna be ground on there. And one good thing with this is if you're out in the field and you're using a file or you chip things and you end up reprofiling in the field, having this along with you can be super helpful because you're gonna keep getting that correct bevel on your ax and it's gonna be in best working condition as possible. What I can do now with this is I can write on here, trapper's ax and my degree reading. I can also make some other cuts, 25, 20, 19, whatever I'd wanna do and write what axes I'm gonna use that and then I can put a small lanyard on here and I can throw this in my toolkit and have it with me for when I'm in the field. So when I really damage my blade, um, and of course that's gonna be accidental because we all know how to use an ax properly, but if for some reason we do drive it into ground or we just hit something wrong and we get a major chip and we need to reprofile that blade, we know where that should be and that's gonna work out perfect. And any type of edge tools from shovels all the way up to grubbing hose, they all have a specific angle that they should be ground at. So if you call the manufacturer or read online, you're gonna be able to find them angles. And you can take a piece of wood like this and put all your different angles on here, all labeled out and have this with you. It's just one little piece of wood to slide down in your toolbox and you have it with you. And anytime you need to repair something, you're good to go. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I'm really looking forward to getting this ax sharpened up and get it out and feel and start working with it. And until the next video, if you would go to www.coldcrackerbushcraft.com and check it out. Also check out my blog. And if you haven't already, please click below to subscribe. I'll keep you updated on the ax and how it's coming along. And take care and stay in the woods, guys.